Hi everybody, I'm Lacey Shane, founder of Real Women, Real Success. Well, maybe you can tell a little bit in my voice this week, I've been a little bit under the weather and I really contemplated whether I should do this week's video or not, but you're so important to me and I didn't want to uh, skip this week's video. So I'm gonna ask for your patience with me. I'm gonna be referring to my notes today, but uh, this is a topic this week that I feel is so important to women's success and that's how to know when to apologize. I don't know if you're one of those women that apologizes too much or says, I'm sorry too much. I certainly have been that type of a woman in my past and I know many women who apologize too much and many women who don't apologize at all or enough. But today we're gonna to talk about when the I'm sorry's are too frequent and what they uh, do to us as professionals and how we can know when it's appropriate to apologize and when we should discontinue the habit of those automatic I'm sorry's that just fly out of our mouth. One of the things that is so detrimental to a woman that apologizes too much is it really sends a message that we value others more than ourselves and that somehow we continually are making mistakes, which is most likely a false assertion. It uh, gives the impression oftentimes that we are weak or that we don't value ourselves as much as we value other people or that we're overly concerned about what other people think or that somehow a reasonable request or uncomfortable news is um, somehow something to apologize for. Um, you know, there's a lot of theories as to why uh, women more often than men will apologize too much. One study asserts that maybe it's this uh, desire to be polite and to try to couch uncomfortable information in sort of this shroud of apology so that it comes across a little more palatable. I, I think there's probably truth in that for some people and some of you find, might, may find nuggets uh, of truth in some of these things for yourselves, but just to contemplate. Uh, sometimes women think um, or maybe uh, use an apology as a precursor to something they think someone might find offensive. Sometimes maybe just um, being overly concerned with what people think about us and uh, rather than just asserting ourselves and what we need to say. You know, one thing is for sure, after years and years of doing it, it can become a habit that almost is, um, it's done unconsciously. And if you were in this category, you're find yourself saying, I'm sorry too often, I really wanna encourage you to think through that because again, we teach people how to treat us in the workplace. We don't want people to think you're weak. And saying I'm sorry too much absolutely takes away your power. As a powerful woman, as a professional, at Real Women Real Success, we want to empower women. And sometimes some of our habits don't support empowering ourselves and this is one of them saying I'm sorry too much so how do you know when you're apologizing too much how do you know when to apologize um, now that you're aware that this could be something that maybe you do you can think about some of these simple guidelines that can help you decide whether you should be saying I'm sorry or not and the first one is very very simple if you're saying I'm sorry as, a, a, as you're walking down the hall, as a pass through, as a throwaway, as a side comment, or as an add on to a normal sentence in the normal discourse of life, it probably is inappropriate. An apology is an event. An apology is there for something real that has happened that is, that is a conversation that you plan for, that you uh, have some feelings about, that you really regret and want to uh, smooth things over with an individual. If you're saying it in passing, probably not appropriate. You have to ask yourself, did you actually wrong someone? Um, you know, if you didn't wrong someone, there's no apology necessary. There are times where sometimes our actions are necessary to take and maybe they land differently on different people, especially when you're growing. Sometimes you have to leave a job and that doesn't land well on someone, but it's best for you. That's not an apology situation. You didn't wrong anybody, even though they may feel wronged or feel like you weren't loyal to them because you're moving on to your next step, whatever the case may be, you didn't wrong them. So if you didn't wrong someone and you don't feel responsible for that, then there's no apology necessary. 
Um, was the thing that you're apologizing for in your control? So oftentimes I hear women apologizing, and I used to be this person, but I've gotten over myself, is apologizing for things out of our control. If you're taking a sick day, if you have a family emergency or a sick child to care for, um, if you have a change in priorities and you have to reschedule a dinner date with a friend or whatever, those are not circumstances for an apology. If you're living in accordance with your values, your priorities, your standards, and your commitments, there's no apology in that. In fact, what it says is, I love myself, I believe in what I stand for, my values, my life is important to me, and this is a decision that I have to make. You don't need to apologize for it. You know, ask yourself this other question. It's a very interesting question. Are you actually sorry? You know, sometimes I think we feel we should be sorry and we aren't, and that's a clue to think through it more because sometimes there's more to that. Maybe it gets into some of the complexities of emotions and relationship dynamics, and maybe when the chips are down and we really think about it, maybe we're actually not sorry and there's actually no apology warranted. Maybe it is just fine if someone is uncomfortable with either something you said or an outcome. You really uh, want to think through that scenario of if you actually are sorry. If you are actually sorry, that's a great sign too. You're taking responsibility for your actions and you really want to convey to the person that you do take responsibility and that you aren't happy with the way it landed on them and you do want to make an apology. Again, that's a planned thing most oftentimes. It's a conversation that happens in private. It's not in passing as you're going out to get a cheeseburger, planning a dinner, or walking down the hall, uh, passing a colleague. Can you apologize with no caveats? Are there any buts? Are there any conditions? If there's any if, ands, buts, conditions, it's probably not a true apology. Maybe you're looking at more of a negotiation or a discussion about the relationship that you need to have. Maybe it's a conversation that needs to happen, but it may not be an apology. So think through that. Here are some things you should absolutely never apologize for your values, your standards, your commitments, and your priorities. Doing your job. Making a legitimate or reasonable request. Saying no or telling the truth. Not knowing an answer. Don't need to apologize for that. Ending a dysfunctional relationship. Somebody else's failure or problems. Uh, things out of your control. We just talked about that. Following your dreams or your faith, all things you should never apologize for. So keep those in your hip pocket, you know, because if you're thinking through, should I be apologizing or not? Sometimes we are doing things related to all these different never apologize for factors in our life. And if one of those is involved, no apology necessary. Sometimes I'm sorry becomes a habit for people. And recognize that if it's just a habit and you're doing it to smooth things over or pave the way for uncomfortable information, just do this. First of all, awareness is 99% of the battle. Once you're aware you're doing it, just make an effort to stop. Just stop saying I'm sorry. You're not gonna miss a golden opportunity to do something you should do if there's truly an apology warranted. It's never too late to do a well-planned apology, but just try to stop that habit of saying I'm sorry because you're teaching people how to treat you. You're teaching people that you undervalue yourself as compared to them, that maybe you care too much about their feelings but not enough about your own. And all those are things that take your power away as a woman. And we want you empowered as a woman. You have skill sets that are needed. You should be proud of yourself and those skill sets. And we want you to go to the highest levels that you want to do and to be respected by those around you, um, not from a power standpoint, but from a personal power standpoint. And one of the ways that you can foster that is to not over apologize. So, you know, we all have those opportunities when we should apologize. We're all fallible, we're all human, and part of a really golden um, apology is when we take responsibility for hurting someone else and we truly feel bad about it and we know that we could have done things differently and that is okay the sign of a very strong and secure person is they are able to apologize when warranted but as women we know that oftentimes we apologize too much so I just wanted to bring this to your attention and talk to you a little bit about it because one of the ways that if you're one of those people that apologizes too much 
one of the ways you can empower yourself is to stop apologizing all the time and realize you have value too and a, a well positioned request is totally okay delivering uncomfortable information if the trajectory trajectory <laughs> If the trajectory of your life is not in accordance with what someone else would like, uh, that's not necessarily a reason to apologize. So I hope that's helpful to you. If you've been watching my emails, you also know that uh, my book came out this week. It's not just my book. I wrote it with 19 other women. It's an anthology. It's called Keys to Conscious Business Growth and it's on Amazon as of February 23rd. I hope you'll buy a copy. If you do, I don't get any money out of that. I just was blessed to have the opportunity to co-author this book with 19 other successful women. Mine's the fourth chapter. It's titled, Women Hold the Keys to Conscious Leadership and the Solutions to Today's Biggest Problems. And in that, I talk a little bit about my own story and the uh, key skill sets and talents and strengths that women are born with that are so needed in the world today and a little bit how to leverage those strengths in your life. So I, I hope that you'll pick it up. It's um, on Amazon, Keys to Conscious Business Growth. And that is all I have for you this week. Thanks for being patient with me and my uh, little bit heavy voice this week. I will be back at you next week. And until I see you again, I hope that you go out there and have a great week. Know I'm your biggest fan and I'll see you next time.